it's all works. Hello Facebook. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my kitchen here on my farm in the West Country. I was just saying to the folks on Instagram that it's uh, fish on Friday, so I'm going to be cooking up a dish from my yearbook two. If you've got yearbook two, that's one with this cover. Uh, it's on page 105. It's the grilled sardines with capers, anchovies and fennel puree. It's a real winner and it's got lots of other good things in there as well which I shall show you in just a moment. Um, thank you so much for all your lovely comments for my Wellbeing Wednesday live which I did on Wednesday, funny enough, and I introduced a new fashion brand to you called Sophie Dundas and this is just a small little private brand. You won't find her on the high street, you won't find her in any shops even because she sells private sales I went to a friend's house sale and that's how I first discovered her lovely dresses a few years ago. And obviously she normally would sell on fairs and events during the summer and you know, none of that's happened. So it's another family run brand that needs a bit of a shout out. So I thought I would help her out and she's given us all a lovely discount, 10% discount using Liz Loves. So this is another of her dresses. I actually pulled this one out of the back of my wardrobe because I bought this oh, I don't know how many years ago, four or five years ago maybe. And of course it's come back into fashion if you keep things long enough. I mean, I've got stuff going back like 30 years, but it's a shirt waster, which I really like. And I just like the length of the sleeve, you know, so it means that if you're out and about, I mean, I quite like to keep my upper arms covered. I mean, I'm less self-conscious of them now because I do a bit more working out, but I'm always a little bit self-conscious of my upper arms. Um, and I just like the V neckline I think it's really great and this was the one that I was wearing on Wednesday this is also one of hers and this is um, the rosy style you literally just throw it on and it's in the pink daisy print this one is called Lily yes so heart my lovely Lily who's not well sending you big heart sweetheart anyway I had a really nice email message uh, from Sophie after I mentioned her dresses on Wednesday she uh, is a traveller, you can go onto her website sophiedundas.com and have a look and hear about her story and she works with this family of sisters over in Hanoi in Vietnam and she goes and she buys small batches of fabric so when you go onto the website you'll see lots of different styles of dresses so you've got things like the shirt waster like this or the little pull on one like my little pink one and you choose the style and then you choose lots of different colour fabric options. Now she has said that she's getting more of this one because since I wore this on Wednesday, of course it sold out. But the good news is that she's managed to find some more of this fabric. So it is the lovely sisters in Vietnam at who work from home with their sewing machines. It's really ethical. It's you know family run businesses where the money goes directly back into the local community. So it's really empowering and helping other women. I just love that, the fact that we can connect you know, I'm wearing something here that was handmade with care by this family over in Hanoi for whom it was a lifesaver, an absolute lifeline. You know, they don't have any social welfare system, you know, and very often women are so disadvantaged. And so getting them things that they can do at home to bring in revenue, they don't even have to leave home because many of them can't or they're not allowed or there's kind of cultural restrictions, or all those kinds of things. So all the stuff that we... Western women take for granted. Isn't it nice to be able to kind of reach out that kind of virtual hand reaching across the globe to give a hand, a helping hand up, not just a hand out, we're not just handing out charity, we're actually providing a sustainable hand up. Um, so this is the message, I will read it to you, uh, which Sophie wrote. I've got my trusty iPad here today. I've got lovely Amy on Facebook. Hi Amy! Hope you're well. Thank you for tuning in today and being part of the team on our Facebook community. Um, so she said, this was from Sophie Dundas, uh, please could you pass on to Liz lots of love and thank her so much for the lovely shout out she gave me yesterday. She looked fab in the dress and I had a great response. I've gained followers on my work Instagram and had such positive feedback on my dresses. I am such a tiny business to me, I'm overwhelmed by the attention and everybody in Vietnam who I've shared the information with is just so thrilled. So that is great. So really happy, Sophie, to give you another little mention here and thank you for giving us all the Liz Loves discount. Um, we really appreciate that too, especially as you're such 
a lovely small business. Um, just to say, welcome those of you who are new. If you've not joined me here before, I have two phones in front of me. I am live if you're watching this in real time. We do save it so that you can come back and watch later if you'd like to as well. Um, my Facebook is managed by Amy, who's my digital website editor. Thank you, Amy. So Amy is able to put links to everything I talk about. So I can see there's a lovely uh, link that's gone up there to Sophie's website. And obviously on Instagram, we can't link. So what I've done before the live is I go on to this little thing called Linktree, which if you go into my Instagram bio, it's a little blue line that says Linktree and you click on that and the links to everything that I'm talking about, hopefully as long as I don't go too far off track, um, will be on Linktree. But if all else fails, you'll find everything on lizellwellbeing.com. So don't forget to head over there. So it being Friday, normally it's Floral Friday. Uh, I don't know if you follow Simon Lysett, who I've been doing some lovely lives with. He's over in LA, get him. He's uh, hobnobbing with all sorts of fun people over on his Instagram. So I've got a few little floral things here just as a kind of tribute, just to keep that going. Obviously my, my print dress is this is a pretty tulipy print. I've got my ivy earrings in which you can get, my fair trade, these are my own design, you can get 40% off these with IV40, that's worth knowing. That's just for the next few weeks, I think. Um, and then you may have seen me mention on my Instagram this morning, I posted a picture of my roses. So I came back to the farm last night and woke up this morning and it was a bit of a grey day, but I looked out of my window and I could see my roses. Look, and this... I mean, how amazing is nature? This is one sprig. Look, I just cut one branch of roses and it's like a bunch of flowers. <laughs> it's just there, I don't even need to arrange them. All I need to do is find a vase. So they smell amazing. I really wish you could smell. I'm gonna hold them up here. I know you can't smell, but you can get the kind of the idea. And when I checked to see what they were called, because I've got so many different varieties in the garden, um, they're called Compassion. This rose is called Compassion. And that just kind of got me thinking. So I did my little Instagram post this morning talking about kindness and compassion and about being kind to ourselves, being kind to others. Anyway, then I went and did my online gym exercises with Michael Gary. And uh, I'm not actually feeling 100%, I have to tell you. I think I'm a bit kind of sniffy and a bit chesty. I think maybe I'm brewing a little bit of a cold or maybe because... You know, it's been a stressful time uh, recently and I think maybe my immune system's taken a bit of a dip. I haven't been doing kind of the things that I should. So I haven't been going to bed early enough. I haven't been drinking enough water. I haven't been taking all my supplements that I normally take. So because I was away, I got out of the habit and didn't pick it up again when I came back this week. So lots of reasons. Anyway, I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow. Yeah, I am actually doing something tomorrow. I'm only doing it on Instagram though because I haven't got Amy with me. But anyway, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, anyway, I was talking to Michael and he's really good. You know, he, he knows, I guess because I've worked with him for so long, he knows when to push and when to pull back. And he said it's really important that you don't over-exercise and don't over-train if you are not feeling 100% because it can compromise your immune system. So we just did some kind of gentle stuff, some gentle, we did some abdominal exercises and some gentle stretches. And then he said, Liz, are you drinking enough water? Mm. Reminder. And I said, well, you know, actually, probably not. And he said, bear in mind, in the summer, you know, we lose so much water and so much moisture, even just while we sleep overnight. You know, so the first thing we do really should be a really large glass of water. And let's just try and get more water in. Because I've been feeling a bit headachey. And one of the signs of dehydration is a headache. You know, so instead of reaching for the painkillers, reach for the glass of water and try and rehydrate. So that was a really timely reminder for me to rehydrate and to drink more water because I just, I don't know about you, but I just get so caught up in stuff. I'm rushing around and my head is full of a million and one things and I just forget, just forget to be rehydrating and drinking. So anyway, note to self, this weekend, I'm gonna do a bit of self-care this weekend and part of that's gonna be drinking lots of water. Hmm. So that was my roses. And just the last little thing about compassion is after I finished with Michael, I thought I'm just gonna do a little bit of chill out. I'm just gonna take five, 10 minutes, just do a bit of deep breathing and maybe a little bit of kind of meditation, just switch my brain off. And I discovered this new app, well, it's not new, you probably know about it already, but I've just discovered it's new to me. It's called Calm. You heard of the Calm app? 
So I installed this. I think it might have been Kim, actually, my lovely friend Kim, who was with me in Italy last week. I think we were talking about kind of stress and managing it. And she said, you know, what do you use? And I said, well, I've got Insight Timer, which I like. That's another app I've talked about. And she said, oh, no, no, you need to be using Calm. So she, anyway, she showed me where it was and I uploaded it. And sure enough, it's really good. I really like it. So I had five minutes this morning of Calm. And you, you get this kind of sea pebbly music and I there's a very nice, not annoying voice that talks to you. You know how some of the voices you think, I just can't be listening to that because it's not going to make me calm, it's going to make me annoyed. But no, it's a very calm voice. And anyway, it was just a few just kind of affirmations and just acknowledgement of being in the moment and that everything is okay. And the word that came up three times was compassion. Isn't that amazing? So, you know, I haven't actually heard that word said for a long time by anybody else, but it was just interesting that, you know, I'm thinking about compassion. My roses that I picked this morning were compassion. The word that came through on my app this morning was compassion. So there you go. Just thought I'd change, uh, share it. Now, something else I'm going to share this morning or this afternoon, rather, because we are already racing through the day and it is Fish Friday. Um, I'm just going to get my uh, app my Google document up, by the way, so I remember everything. So Amy, if you haven't seen me do this before, Amy puts in lots of questions. Um, is there a subscription charge for the Calm app? You can get a free version or you can upgrade, like all these things, they do a basic one. Um, and I've actually thought it was pretty good, so I have subscribed. I think you do a free month to see how it is. And so we'll see how it goes. I thought I'd do a free month and I think I'm gonna like it and keep it, but we'll see. Uh, so today I thought I would do, Mandy on Facebook says, what supplements you recommend? Okay, so just a quick heads up for tomorrow. I am going to be back in my kitchen tomorrow because when I was thinking about myself and about how I've taken a bit of a dip this week, and I need to get myself back on track. I need to think about what I'm eating, you know, the kind of, I usually make a really good immune supporting shake. I've got out of the habit of doing that. I thought I'd maybe make that tomorrow and share that with you have a look at some of the supplements and things that I've been taking, the drops of immunity, which I really like from Life Armour. So I've gone back to those. Lots of nice comments actually about the uh, the Life Armour drop. So thank you for sharing those because it's always good to get feedback. You know, I always feel a little bit nervous when I put Liz Loves on something. You know, I only do that if I genuinely love it. You know, I've got to, you know, it's not kind of Liz quite likes. You know, it's actually Liz loves because I do love it and I've tried it myself. I think it works. I think it's worth sharing with everybody. So obviously with supplements and things, it's, you know, it can be quite tricky and what works for me might not work for you. So I've loved hearing all your feedback about Life Armour in particular, starting with the slumber drops, which were my favourite because they absolutely give me a good night's sleep. Um, and then moving on, and there was a very nice comment on Instagram this morning, I think it was, from somebody saying thank you for introducing them to the slumber drops because they've had trouble sleeping for years and actually they were really working. So that's really good. And that kind of then gives you confidence, doesn't it, to try other things that they're doing because you think, well, these guys obviously know what they're talking about. And the other one that I've been using recently is the drops of immunity. So I took those to Italy with me. I put them in my little cabin baggage, little clear plastic bag. And uh, they've got all the things in them that I've written about for years, for decades, echinacea and elderberry and all those good things. And I just thought, actually, now I'm, I'm just going to maybe take a bit more at the moment and just try and bolster everything. So um, I hope you're able, Mandy, to join me tomorrow. I know you're on Facebook. I won't be on Facebook tomorrow, but we may try and upload it. I might be able to just film it on Instagram and then share it across. We'll see. Um, but yeah, if you want to diarise tomorrow, I will be here talking specifically about supplements and immune support and I'm going to be doing it for myself because I'm going to be feeding myself with all these good things for the weekend and I thought you know what if I'm doing it for myself in my kitchen let's just click the phone on and share it because it's easy for me to do it even if I don't have my whole team behind me behind the scenes kind of uploading stuff we can just chat can't we anyway so that's my plan so what I'm going to do today is I am going to as I say cook this recipe you may have seen on my Instagram I went to see my lovely fishmonger friend Rex in Chelsea a Chelsea fishmonger he's a bit of a legend I have to say that's what I'm going to be cooking uh, I do love a sardine I do love a nice sardine full of oily fats lots of omega-3s really good for you these are some of said sardines that I bought from Rex yesterday 
and I am going to do them with fennel and anchovies and capers and it's a really simple but quite impressive dish. So what you need to do is you need to start with some fennel. Um, what I'll do is, I don't think the recipe's on the website, so I'll screenshot it after this, okay, and I'll, I'll pop it. If you haven't got your yearbook too yet, then I'll, I'll do a little screenshot, so hopefully you can follow along. We'll just jot it down as I go along. And I'm also going to share this with you, because I bought this morning from my local greengrocer. I had to go and buy some fennel. And look, <laughs> this is great. This is the fennel fronds that came with the fennel bulbs. And uh, I just thought these are too good. You could do all sorts of things with these. You could juice them, uh, you could dry them. So I've got some of my dried herbs up here, which, you know, if I have extra herbs, I will oops, often just hang them up somewhere warm and dry them and then just crumble them. Uh, that's parsley, but I would just crumble that into a jar and then you've got ready-made dried parsley for whenever rather than buying expensive little pots and packets. So I might do that with the fennel. I might dry some of this, but it just smells incredible. And it just looks so beautiful, doesn't it? I thought I might actually put some in a, in a vase, just maybe with a few of those lovely pink compassion roses, you know, it just looks so pretty. Anyway, so that is my fennel. And of course you could always chop it up and eat it, put it in your salad. So you're gonna need some fennel. So what I've done, uh, I've actually started the process because it takes about half an hour um, you, don't, it's not, you don't have to constantly cook it for half an hour, but it takes half an hour to kind of simmer. So I've got in here a, a fennel bulb, and I've just chopped that, hope you can see. And I've just been simmering that with a bit of olive oil, obviously my favourite olive oil. And then into that I'm going to use a clove of garlic, so I've just got a bit of crushed garlic. And I'm only going to use half of it in this, I'm going to save half for a bit later. So half of my garlic is going into there and also I mentioned the rosemary so I've got some just fresh this was rosemary again I picked this morning um, and I've just taken some stalks off and just chopped bits of bits of fresh rosemary and honestly the smell in my kitchen from the fresh fennel to the fresh rosemary you just can't beat it it's it's those essential oils and you know, I was talking about essential oils on Wednesday and it's the essential oils in the herbs that give them so many fabulous therapeutic properties. It gives them their antioxidant qualities. So I'll just sprinkle the rosemary into there and then I'll just cook that together. So I'm basically cooking the fennel with the chopped garlic and the rosemary. It's really simple. This is, I mean, it's such an easy recipe to do. So I'll let that just simmer away. Don't let me forget. Will you? Like the onions <laughs> the other day. I'll be watching. <laughs> I will be watching. Let me just scroll up my messages here on Instagram because Instagram for some reason doesn't ever want to scroll. Um, so there we go. Uh, so in now looking at the recipe here just to make sure that I do it in the right way. Um, so yeah, so you're basically going to let that simmer and cook for about half an hour because then you're just going to whiz it up. So you just want to liquidize it to blend it all together. So while that is doing, you then need to take some sultanas and you have sultanas, basically capers and a few black olives. Now, if you don't have all these things, they're not essential. They're just, if you want to do the complete dish, then they're great flavors. So sultanas, black olives and capers, little caper berries. They're actually flowers, capers, do you know that? Um, and then what I do with the sultanas, what I like to do with them is actually soak them in hot water, just so they go all nice and plump, otherwise they're just kind of a bit dry. Um, so these have been soaked, the nice plump, juicy sultanas. And then what you're going to do is you're going to mix that with um, a few breadcrumbs and some pine nuts, okay? So that's kind of like making a stuffing, if you like. And I've made my breadcrumbs out of leftover sourdough bread and it just goes really hard and don't throw it away. Whenever I've got old slices of stale bits of bread, I will just whiz them up um, into breadcrumbs and then just pop them in a bag in the freezer. So whenever you need breadcrumbs to coat a bit of chicken or fish or whatever it is, then you've got them there. So I'm going to pop the breadcrumbs into a frying pan and I'm also going to put the pine nuts in these as well because I just want to lightly toast them. So I will put these over here, keeping an eye on everything, of course, because that's the danger, isn't it? I'll forget and it'll all burn. Anyway, just shout at me, wave something. <laughs> oh dear, um, it'll be very nice when I'm doing this with a full, a full team. I'm actually going to be back 
doing some filming for this morning quite soon. Um, we were going to be off travelling, doing some more of my well-being from around the world, but of course we can't. It's quite tricky at the moment to get film crews and stuff to travel. So uh, they're all going to come to my farm. Isn't that cool? So we're just working out what we're going to do here, and that will be amazing because it will mean that it won't just be me with a phone. <laughs> I might actually have somebody with a proper camera and a proper microphone and, you know, somebody to actually yell at me, Liz, the onions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Devin, I'm making sardine something. Yes, sardine something. It is. It's from yearbook two. If you've got this, my yearbook two, uh, this is page 105. Grilled sardines with capers, anchovies and fennel puree. And it comes under the summer party section. Um, those of you who know my yearbooks will know that they're divided into seasons. So I start with spring, then move into summer, autumn, winter, obviously. And what's so nice is that you, whatever time of year it is, you can just dip in and go, hmm, what's seasonal right now? What's, you know, what have we got that's around that would work? And this is something that you could serve it with, or if you had it, want a veggie option, this is tomato kissier. That's also a really good dish. That's on the next page. And if you, and this is actually, this is a really, really good one. This is the summer vegetable and flagellet stew with tarragon gremolata. That is, oops, poke myself in the eye with a clothes peg. There you go. That's, I mean, it's beautiful. The summer section is, is particularly good. Um, so that is, that is this. So basically I have got, let's not forget, uh, these. So that's my fennel, garlic and rosemary. And then here I've got my breadcrumbs, which are toasting nicely um, with the pine nuts. Whoops, don't want them to burn, just want them to just very lightly toast. And then what you do is you mix them all together. So you'll end up, this was a little bit that I made earlier. So this is what you end up with because you mix it all together. So you create this sort of really lovely, tasty, juicy stuffing. Um, and then what you do with, so that that's the breadcrumb and pine nut and sultanery bit. The other bit is the fennel, which you've got in here, which they're probably kind of softened and cooked through nicely now. So what you would do with this lot, um, just push that down, is you would then blend that together. Okay, so you would, I'm just gonna mash up all that lovely cooked fennel. So I use uh, just a hand blender. Where are we? Yeah, so I just use a hand blender like that to put it all in a bowl. Z, 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 whiz it all up. I won't do it for real because it just takes makes too much noise. Um, but that's one that I did earlier. So I've got my. It's not kind of pureed. If you want a really smooth puree, then you could blend it much more to make it completely smooth and all kind of chefy. Uh, I just like it. It's a little bit rough and ready, almost like a sort of vegetable pate. So I've got that, and then you would take your. Those are about done now. Yeah, lovely toasted. So I've got my toasted breadcrumbs and toasted pine nuts in here. And then I would simply mix those. So I'm gonna pop these, sorry, you can't see very well, into a glass bowl. And then into that, I'm adding my sultanas and my capers and my black olives. So I'm adding that. I'm going to add in some dried parsley. I've also got some nice fresh parsley as a garnish. This is, um, so this was parsley that I grew in the garden. Um, just like I showed you earlier when I was drying mine and then you just literally just crumple it up and store it in a jar and it's just so great to have it you know because a sprinkling of parsley just kind of transforms everything you can also put a squeeze of lemon oil uh, lemon in there if you want and a bit of olive oil but that really just makes your um, it's kind of just like a sprinkle that you're going to sprinkle over it so next thing is take your fish um, and, oh, I forgot to mention the anchovies. Sorry, I've also got in here anchovies, just reminded here by the jar. So I've got my little anchovy fillets. What I might do is just chop a few of those really quickly. I do like anchovies. Anchovies just kind of bring so many dishes to life. When I was in Umbria last week, I'm just gonna use one little anchovy fillet. It's just amazing how you can transform lots and lots of things. You may have seen my posts on courgette flowers or zucchini flowers and uh, you know, if you're lucky enough, you can get them fresh here. So they're kind of a very much a seasonal thing, or maybe you grow them in the garden. So I'm just going to add that little bit of chopped anchovy into my mixture here. And it just is a flavour enhancer. You know, you can buy anchovy paste in tubes and you can squeeze it onto, you know, so many things or into sauces and soups. So I was stuffing courgette flowers. It's very therapeutic to stuff a courgette flower 
with just a little knob of mozzarella cheese and a basil leaf and an anchovy or a little piece of anchovy and then just you can just grill it or you can lightly shallow fry it amazing really I mean just epic 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 flavors so what I've got here is I have my little fishies on my little dishy and I'm going to grill those or griddle them so I've got a, just a normal griddle pan here and I am going to put a tiny bit of olive oil where's my olive oil there it is this is, um, this is not only my olive oil, this is my olive oil. Well, it's my family's olive oil. It comes from their olive groves in Umbria. So it's in a lovely unmarked bottle. Um, lots on olive oil, obviously, on the website, because I'm such a fan of it. I cook with it, um, use it in dressings, you know, use it for so many different things. So now Rex, my lovely fishmonger friend, he just basically uh, gutted the fish. You can leave the heads on, you can take them off, whichever you prefer. And then I'm just going to open them up just to flatten them out, just so they're sort of butterflied. And the great thing about little fish like sardines or sprats or whatever is the little bones here are obviously a fantastically good source of, of calcium. And you can eat them, you can crunch them up. Obviously be careful not to choke, um, but they're not like the big fish bones that get stuck in your throat. So I will just, these are so delicious. I think these are possibly Cornish. Um, and they really don't take very much cooking. So it's about one minute. So I'm really not gonna to have to get distracted. <laughs> Otherwise uh, you end up with um, overcooked fish. So I've just got my little fishies here, which I'm gonna pop onto the hot plate to cook. Excuse me one sec, I'm just gonna rinse my hands, get rid of the fishiness. Um, there we go. Uh, so that's gonna be sizzling away. And while that sizzles away, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a very quick tip that I did first thing this morning, because as I mentioned, I was feeling just a bit chesty and a bit, kind of a bit, yeah, well, just a bit chesty, really. Oh, that's making a bit of noise, isn't it? Sorry. Can you hear me all right? I'll come really close. <laughs> Um, and I was reminded, because we were talking about essential oils on Wednesday, about the antibacterial properties of some of the oils that you find, you know, things like Vicks Vapor, vapor Rub, when you actually look at the ingredients, that contains things like eucalyptus and pine and all those um, really antiseptic and decongesting essential oils. So I have got my uh, Neil's Yard essential oils, which I was talking about earlier, and this is thyme, and what I did was I just made myself my own version, if you like, of like a chest rub. So I used my Isla Skin Balm, which is another lovely little British brand that we have a Liz Loves discount with. So I just took a little bit of the uh, Skin Balm, and I put that in my hand, just like that, and then I add one drop of the balm and you could, sorry, the oil, and you could use maybe pine or eucalyptus. Um, oops, two drops there, I don't really want to. Um, so just rub it together like that. Oh, it's such a great inhalation. Really, really good. And I just patted that all over my chest this morning and gave myself a bit of a neck massage with it as well. And I'm actually gonna rub it on my arms because it's too good, too good to waste. And it just helps clear the airwaves, it's antiseptic, um, and, you know, another great use of an essential oil. And, of course, you know, if you've got your little skin balm, such a great way. You could do all sorts of things. You could make a sleep balm, you know, you could have your Isla balm, and then you could add a little drop of lavender. And then just use that just for a bit of de-stressing neck and jaw massage before you sleep. And then you get the lovely aroma of the oil, and you get the nourishment of the balm, and you get the relaxation of the massage. So it all works together to just have a therapeutic effect. So let me just flip these. So literally, um, I'm gonna flip them now. Um, once you've done them, put them in skin side first, and then flip them over. This is going to be my lunch. So just another uh, minute or so on there. And then I'm going to serve them with greens. So here is, I've got one of my pretty plates here. Uh, I'm going to put them on a bed of two different greens. This is 
watercress, my favourite, um, from the Watercress Company, who will deliver to your door. They do boxes. It's really, really lovely company, and they grow in a chalk stream. Um, so I've made a lovely bed of watercress, and then I think I can take them off now. Put them over there. Sorry, noisy fish. Uh, and then I've got this extra treat, and this is what uh, I got from Rex yesterday. Samphire. Look at that. So samphire is this sea vegetable, and it's unusual because it's a vegetable that grows in salt water, and it picks up a lot of the minerals from the salt water where it's growing. So it's really high in iodine. So it's really good for plant-based eaters who aren't getting as much iodine as perhaps they should. Um, it's a really good option. It's also rich in calcium. It's very high in vitamin C. And it goes really well with fish, especially oilier fish like herring, sardines, mackerel. Um, and I'm just going to put that in with my watercress. couple of comments about my hair clip. Yeah, my hair clip. So I'm pretty sure that I got these on Amazon, I think. I'll have to find the link and I'll see if I can um, pop it on my link tree. But yeah, I just love, you know, sometimes you just want your hair off your face, don't you? But And yet you don't want to just pull it back in a ponytail because that's a bit boring. So I do love hair clips. I think maybe it was because my first job was working at Moulton Brown in South Moulton Street when it was just a little hairdressing salon. And Caroline Collis, who was the director, she used to go on buying trips to Paris and she'd come back with boxes of antique hair clips. And they had these amazing, almost like apothecary counters in the salon. And they would sell these extraordinary, often unique, hair clips and art deco designs. And I've still got so many clips from those days. I'll have to get them all out one day and show you my collection of hair clips because it's um, a bit geeky, but I do love it. Okay, so on here, I'm going to pop my little fish. And the great thing about this is sardines are really inexpensive. And of course you don't need, you know, I mean, two here would be plenty uh, because you've got your lovely bits and pieces that you're going with it. Now you can either serve it on a bed of your fennel puree or you could um, use it as a kind of a stuffing. I'm going to use it here almost more as a stuffing. And sometimes with oily fish, you just need that kind of freshness of flavour coming from the fennel and the capers and the black uh, olives just to cut through some of that oiliness and of course then you've got your sprinkle of um, goodness here so this is your breadcrumbs the toasted pine nuts the sultanas the black olives it's like that game isn't it? you have to remember everything that was on a tray uh, and what else was it um, capers yes and a bit of parsley so I'm going to sprinkle that on just like that Oh, it smells so good. And then I've just got a little bit of fresh flat leaf parsley here, which I can just pop over the top. Who else is having fish on Friday? I think it's just such a, a great way to remember, actually, to eat more fish and to get the omega-3s. Interestingly, the samphire does have some form of omega-3 in it. Um, not as much, obviously, as, as eating fish. But, yeah, it's very interesting. It's like if you are a plant-based eater and you're not eating any fish and you're taking, you want to have omega-3s in your diet, and particularly for the DHA, for our brain, make sure you get the algae-based. Okay, it's no good having the flaxseed, because although it contains DHA, it doesn't convert properly into the essential fats that our brain needs. So make sure that you have an algae-based supplement or eating lots of samphire. Anyway, that, ta-da, is my lunch dish. Um, I have got here, oops, let me pop that down. Here is one that I prepared earlier, just in case that one didn't work out. I thought I'd better have a proper one. <laughs> so that is, hopefully, I think when you compare it, that's always my yardstick, actually, is how does it look in the book compared to um, when you actually make it? And I think, yeah, I think I've done a, done a pretty good job, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty much the same. Anyway, if you do make it, or if you make anything from yearbook two, um, do please tag me. I would love to see. So yearbook two is only available from Lazar Wellbeing. So we have them on our website. I've actually got them here on the farm. Got them here with me. So I literally hand sign them. I put them in a box and I take them to our local post office. 
<laughs> that is, you know, oh, with the help of the kids who are carrying the bags. So, you know, it's kind of family effort. Um, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Joanna. That's absolutely brilliant. Just to tell you, I was uh, getting some questions there about the essential oils. So I was using for my chest, uh, for my chest rub, I was using thyme. This is the Neil's Yard one. Don't forget that you can get your free Neil's Yard voucher if you subscribe. So there's a subscription offer at the moment. Let me just show you. Um, actually, this is another recipe from the magazine, which I'm going to be cooking up over the weekend. Let me just show you this. This is, look, how delicious does that look? Doesn't that look fabulous? Oh, and this one, if you've got the magazine, it's on page 62. It's green beans, strawberries and walnuts with a feta, mint and kefir dressing. How fabulous. Feta, mint and kefir. Oh, absolutely. Honestly, for a light summer lunch, totally delicious. Anyway, I digress. So that is in the current issue of the magazine. This, as I said before on Wednesday, it's the last issue going into retail. So if you want the magazine, then you do need to subscribe. But in order to share the love, we're doing six issues for the price of five plus free PMP if you're in the UK. We can ship internationally. I know there've been lots of questions about that. Absolutely, you just have to pay the extra postage and um, that's no problem. Uh, and at the moment, there's this special Neil's Yard voucher. Now, the way this works, is I know there were lots of questions yesterday on Facebook. So I asked my team to explain exactly how it works to get your little Neil's Yard voucher. So you get a £10 voucher you can spend on anything. So for me, I would buy the English lavender because it's a dream and it's £9.50 in the bottle. So you basically got a free bottle of lavender oil. Um, but what happens is when you subscribe to the magazine, you get an email confirmation. And then it, because it's direct debit, as soon as your bank has set up with Warners who handle the magazine subscriptions and taken the first payment, so basically as soon as you paid for it, then you get the confirmation Warners. It comes from the Warners email, not from Lizard Wellbeing. They then send you the voucher. So it just depends how long your bank takes to process it. Some banks are really quick. It's just a few days. Other banks might take you know, a week or two. So it's worth also checking your junk email just in case you know, your spam filters or whatever don't recognize Warners and you know, they, they put it into junk. But that's how it works. So you don't get a physical voucher. You'll get an email from Warners once the direct debit um, has just gone through. So really simple. And I hope you enjoy it because Neil's Yard, as I said on Wednesday, is a brand that I do really like. If you are international or you're going away or you just like some free magazines, who doesn't like free things? Don't forget that you can get a whole month of completely free magazines from Readly. So click the link. Amy, sweetheart, would you pop the link on Facebook? And I know there's a link on Linktree. So just click on that link uh, and it'll say, subscribe to Lizelle Wellbeing magazine, I think via Readly. But it's not just us. You get access to like 10,000 or more of magazines internationally. You, I mean, it's extraordinary. I, I used the Readly app when I was away in Italy. I used it on my iPad and I just read so many interesting magazines. And um, I know that we've had a lot of uh, viewers here who have you know are into things like crochet and knitting and they subscribe to all those magazines and they download all the patterns and it's all free. It's amazing. So uh, I highly recommend it. Readly is normally $7.99 a month which I think even then, frankly, for all those magazines is really good value. And you get Liz our Wellbeing. And you get not only the current issue, you get all our back issues as well. So, you know, that's amazing to be able to see what were we cooking last summer. Let's take a look at those recipes. Or let's have a look at the recipes from summer 2018. You know, lots of great stuff there. Um, oh, sorry, I can see this kitchen is really hot. <laughs> I'm getting kind of hot. Um, so, yeah, so you just have to use the link. So either Linktree, click there, or um, Facebook will give you the link, or it's on Lizard Wellbeing. You just go to shop, and then I think it says digital magazine. But, yeah, you sign up for a month. It's normally $7.99 a month. Just click on it, because it'll then come up with, we'll give you the month free. So, and then you can cancel it. Just have it for a month and then cancel. You, you know, you don't, it's not one of these things that, you know, you've got to sign up for lots of months and you get one month free. No, you sign up have your free month and then if you don't like it you just cancel it so I think for the summer particularly if you are thinking of heading off if you're having you know a staycation in the UK if you're even if you're just at home and just decided to switch off and take some time out and sit and read some stuff you know it's really highly highly recommended the other thing that's free that I should say before I go is the e-guide the gut health e-guide so that's my new e-book it's called a happier flatter tum and it's all about gut health. So it's all about ways to reduce bloating, 
hopefully help shift a few lockdown pounds. It's all about prebiotics, probiotics, some of the latest research, lots of recipes in that as well, make your own kefir, all sorts of good stuff, and it's completely free. Up until the end of July, after that, it'll just be the normal download price of 4 99 but just grab it, yeah, grab it, share it, share the link with people. I know lots of you have been doing that, and it's it's really great that, um, that we've got all that to share until the end of July. So that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed Fish on Friday. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for all the hearts. Thanks, Liver Bird. Yeah, I, you know, I don't feel too bad. I, I got up this morning. I think maybe it was because I did a small amount of exercise. I did my, my time out and a bit of meditating. Um, I picked some flowers. I, you know, I took some supplements. I'm drinking more water. <laughs> <laughs> I put my time vapor rub on so I think sometimes you need just to listen to your body don't you? you just need to pick up those little signals and think oh hold on I've been a bit stressed haven't been drinking enough water perhaps haven't been doing all the things that I know I should be doing I'm very good at talking about it but sometimes you know when you talk about it you can then forget to do it yourself can't you it's like when we tell our kids oh you must do this and go to bed early and switch your phone off and eat your greens and then we find that we're not doing it ourselves so sometimes we need to take ourselves in hand and have a, have a stern word and say, right, now is the time. So as I said, tomorrow, um, alas, no Facebook, not live anyway, but I will be here, all being well, on Instagram at 12.30. I'll be back in my kitchen and I will surround myself with an array of good and helpful things that I am personally going to start getting back into to get myself back on track. So I'm super happy to share and wherever I can, I'll, I'll pop links to those as well. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Happy, happy weekend. I hope you're signed up to get the newsletter. That will be winging its way to you, I think, at about four o'clock UK time. If you haven't already signed up, you've just got time. And hop on to lizardwellbeing.com and click the sign up to newsletter. Some great recipes in that coming out for the weekend. Uh, I've also recorded a very short Friday Five, which will also be up live a bit later on. Um, but otherwise, have a great rest of the day. Take care. Remember, compassion, kindness, stay calm. Lots of love. Bye-bye.